Listener Production. Welcome to the Motorsport Brief. It's Tuesday, the 16th of May, 2023. We have just wrapped up round three of the Speed Series at Phillip Island. More TCR seat time for one of its stars, who is now gearing up for this weekend's round of the Supercars in Tasmania, where he is a big chance of grabbing some silverware. G'day everybody, Greg Rust with you for a Rusty's Garage shortcast. A quick fix around news, events and things happening in the world of motorsport that we park in the same place beside the regular long-form eps that you know and love. Thank you for the messages on James Small, the recent ep with the Aussie racer turned NASCAR crew chief for Martin Truex Jr. And last week we released Ron Goodman, who raced the West Coast Cooler NASCAR at the Thunderdome back in the day. And he's become an award-winning Porsche file, restoring and modifying all sorts of models from the German mark. And we recorded that in his unbelievable man cave and started some of the cars too, as well as chatting about those that have blown them away in the US historic racing scene. Now, next week we release an app that will give you an insight into motorsport TV, into broadcasting at the highest level with an Aussie who's made a heck of a mark on supercars, has worked on Formula One, Dakar, the World Supercross Championship and more. Keep an eye out for notifications on that. That is a great story with a bit of fun by a great storyteller. While I was working on the Shannon Speed Series TV coverage, we found a window to talk to Will Brown, who won the first ever Australian TCR title back in 2019 in Hyundai. He's continuing to race for the Melbourne Performance Centre team in the latest spec Audi RS3, but at round one in Tassie and at the island, he had all sorts of drama. Now, Will's story has many chapters, plenty still to be written, so we will do a long pod with him one day. But when you look back on things so far, he has been successful right the way along in almost a meteoric rise in various types of cars too. For perspective, the TCR is a 350 horsepower, turbocharged front wheel drive four cylinder. The Erebus Camaro supercar that you know he races is a rear wheel drive V8 with over six Hundred horsepower. They're very different. A quick thanks to our team at the listener tuning shop too. I ran to the NPC truck to chat with Will between races and my quality control wasn't the kind of usual standard that I aim for, but it's the access to Will that matters for you. How's the year been for you? It looked like from a supercar standpoint in WA that it was terrific. Yeah, yeah, obviously Perth was an awesome run for myself and Brody over there. Um, had a great weekend, able to extend that uh, team's championship a little bit more and I was able to claw my, my way up to fourth in the championship. So uh, overall, just got to not make mistakes and uh, keep it consistent. How is it from a the, the brand new generation car, the progression of the team, um, people like Garth Tander talk like you guys are genuine contenders in the mix now. Do you feel like that's the case? Oh, I'd like to think so, you know, obviously every track we've been to we've had really good pace but it's a bit of an unknown, you know you, year on year in the old Gen 2 cars, Triple Eight were there and they were fast and, and for us to step up and be so competitive, it's hard to just say, yep, that's us now, we're, we're there, we're going to be up the front. You, you hope so, but um, you know, it's uh, we're not getting ahead of ourselves, yeah, just taking it a, a race meet at a time is my approach to it and just doing the best job I can to prepare for that race meet and the team is the same. Next stop on the tour for you is uh, is Tassie. Yep. We're talking at Phillip Island as we um, as we record this. What's the preparation been like? How do you think uh, you'll, you'll go there? And is there, I said this to Brody very recently, is there the emergence now of more teams, not just um, Triple Eight and yourselves that are, that are looming as threats as they get you know, accustomed to these Gen 3 cars now too. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be plenty of teams pop up there. Obviously, Chaz has been quite fast as well. Um, and there's, you know, it's it's just going to happen throughout the year. People are going to find stuff and, and it's going to be even more competitive. But we saw at Tasmania on the, on the Saturday, I made a mistake and qualified 22nd. And I think it was 2.9 tenths to first. So um, Tasmania is even, even tighter generally than what Perth is. So I think you're going to see like, you know, maybe one tenth cover the top, 12 cars. Wow. wow. Do you enjoy it down there? Yeah, I love Tasmania. It's an awesome place. I like the track and, and everything about it. So I'm keen to get down there and just uh, 
yeah, get, get into it. It's uh, like I say, it's that uh, it's a bit nervous waiting because you're thinking, oh, I hope we do really well and all of that and uh, back up the front. So, you know, I just want to get into the race meets and, and get into it. Has the variety of driving that you've done in your in your relatively short career, mate, meant that, that you're not sort of... Um Tainted is not the right word, but it, it doesn't mean that you're fixed into a kind of Gen 2 way of thinking. You're a bit freer in your thinking with this new generation car, or is that not sort of really apply? You would think so. You know, for someone like myself and Brody that drives so many different cars and haven't been in, in supercars for that long, I think it uh, has to be a little bit of a benefit compared to someone who's raced supercars for the last 10 years and that's all they've really been racing. So, um, yeah, I think I think that it is, but who knows uh, Who knows if that's actually the case. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, driving as much as you can can't hurt. Tell me about... TCR then. It's been a tough weekend here at uh, at Phillip Island for you. And that's a surprise because the Audi has been a, a very good package. Um, we, we saw that late last year, that new generation car, but there's been some challenges this year for you. And are you talking like, um, as you did in the broadcast this morning, like your your bid for this compressed championship is is almost over? Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's very hard in this championship because there's not that many cars in it this year. Only having 12 or 13 cars um, start each race, you know, you a bad result for someone like Bailey Sweeney who's leading the championship is probably a 6th or 7th so even if you win that race you don't claw back that many points on them throughout the year. I had a stellar year in 2019 in this category and I just won it um, I, I, you know, a round before anyone where I've had 4 DNFs now so I've lost a round and a half pretty much and then just then we had another diff issue um, which was a last place finish so you can nearly call it 5 DNFs, um, you can't claw your way back from there, I, you know if you start thinking that you can, now uh, you're delusional I think so um, yeah we're gonna have to have a look at it after this weekend and then see what we do but it's it's really disappointing obviously a lot of time and effort goes into this and MPC have always run a great car so you know I, I feel sorry for them as well because they put a lot of pride in what they do and um, you know for a car of theirs to have so many dramas this weekend it's very disappointing for both of us but um, yeah three DNFs at uh, Tasmania, two here. It's not very good so far. What are those things like to drive? Because they are diametrically different, mate, to the supercar, aren't they? Yeah, uh, to be honest, it's been a bit of a shitbox this weekend. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I think the diff issue we haven't found because of all the other dramas and, and the amount of understeer we're losing one second to Clemente from um, from the top of Luki to the main straight, so literally in three corners. Um, so I think it's just some sort of issue there. But uh, overall, I, I, I usually do like driving them. It usually produces very fun racing and all of that. But uh, right now I'm just keen to get in my Gen 3 car next weekend after after the weekend I've had here. Good stuff. You did talk about the, the want to go off and do maybe a bit of international competition in this class. Tell us a bit about that and what you might have identified within your busy schedule that you could perhaps have a crack at. Yeah, I haven't looked that far into it, to be honest. I was thinking about the uh, the end of the year, the WTCR sort of finale that they were speaking of, so that would have been good. But it's not it's not for me a certain category to race overseas. It's just to uh, verse the best in the world and, and see how I go against them. So, so Would that be Macau in the schedule? Where are you talking? Bathurst, maybe? What, what's your main focus there? I mean, oh. Bathurst I mean, is obviously going to happen anyway for us here. So. Oh, like I say, when, when I say the finale, that was meant to be that final race at the end of the year yeah. that, uh, you know, the top 40 go there and race so that was my ultimate one obviously competing against the WTCR guys at, at Bathurst and Sydney um, was was definitely a reason why I signed up this year and, and wanted to compete against them but from there I'm just you know, happy doing what I'm doing, racing supercars. I've got a busy life doing everything I do and uh, something pops up overseas I'll be keen to uh, you know just I just you know race anything really yeah. Yeah. but, but- the obvious objective is is wins with Erebus. That's kind of the the top tier of what you what you're about this year. Yeah, to to be honest, it, you know, and I'm very fortunate that I've uh, I've been able to come this far in my racing. The TCR is actually a sideline thing for me, so it's just about getting more racing and um and you know I guess. I can sort of take it on my chin and go, oh, well, this weekend didn't go that well. But, you know, if you're a young guy like Michael Clemente and had this many dramas at the start of the weekend and you're trying to fund it and that, you'd be extremely disappointed, wouldn't you? But, um, you know, for me, supercars is my outright goal. I want to try and win a championship there. And uh, and I'm just focused on my Erebus, uh, Erebus and supercar stuff. But, um, like I say, you, you know, it's still disappointing nonetheless when you come here and don't get to compete. Um, but... Yeah, I've taken it pretty well, and it is what it is, really. What's been the biggest learning for you as a as a young racer? I mean, you won this championship for Hyundai. You're now racing in a in an Audi. You've graduated to to supercars with one of the um, you know great teams, and and 
when I think about it, your career, as I said before, isn't that long, and you're already at the at the the sharp end of things in Australian motorsport. Well, tell us about that. Yeah, it's been good. You've always got to do it young, though. It's it's hard. Like um, you know, I've always wanted to try and get to the point pointy end of supercars by sort of this stage. I'm about to turn 25, so it's been awesome um, to. To be one of those young, young uh, up and comers like myself, Brock and Brody, that are all battling. Like for us to stand on the podium at Perth in that last one, I know Bro- uh, Brock won it, but it's pretty cool to see three guys under 25 there. That um, new wave, that next generation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, you know, sometimes I sit back and take those moments in. I'm a competitive guy, but I always love seeing other people do well as well. Um, so yeah, it was cool to see see Brock and Brody up there and just cool to see that new generation coming through and the few rivalries and, and racing hard you know you saw how Brody gave it to Shane over there and uh, hopefully I can do that in an event but um, yeah I think it's just been exciting the supercars staff all the fans it's it's uh, you know I'm not sure if it's growing or what but you just notice that sort of uh, support behind you and, and our fan base is building and um, yeah it's just been an awesome uh, awesome few months so far. Now has it meant that your relationship with Brody is strong. Does it now because you're both starting to get at the sharp end of things? Does that get a bit tested? How do you balance all that? And how do, does Barry and the team manage all of that with two two fast competitive forces? The funniest thing is we're, we're just switched on and we sort of get each other. Like, we're good mates. I've been talking to him all this weekend when I'm having trouble down here. But, um, you know, even like at Perth, he knew in that last race was a bit quicker. Um, we gapped Reynolds a bit and he actually let me go to, uh, to hunt Brock down now. The team were thinking, oh, should we tell him? And before they even told him, he let me go. And I've done that before for him. So right now, who knows if we're battling for one, two in the championship and it came down to the last race. I'm sure then we'd get our elbows out. But right now, we're pretty um, fixated on making sure the team does well and and what's best for the team and and us in the championship. But, um, yeah, I think it's just about working together and not letting egos get in front of it, uh, in front of you. Like, there's, uh, you know, ego's probably the worst thing that can be in a team. We'll sneak a quick break here. More with Will Brown on Rusty's Garage in just a moment. A couple of fun ones to finish. You've got a great personality. As you've grown and moved up the ladder, has that ever, you know, has anyone ever tried to polish that out of you or have you remained absolutely true to the same Will Brown from from a few years back? (laughs) Yeah, I'm not. I'm not allowed to swear as much. So no, <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Um, no, not at all. Um, you know, I've never had someone tell me I can't do what I'm doing or anything like that. I race for a great team in uh, in Erebus Motorsport, and Barry and Betty accept how you are, and uh, and Brody's the same. Brody's an absolute hard ass. So I take the different approach, but um, I race to have fun. That's why I started racing. I'm very fortunate, you know, to to be able to race in supercars and earn money and all that. But ultimately, I race to have fun. I go there to be with mates and have a good time, and and that's how I look at it these days from there and having fun you know it's not like a job people go oh you might get burnt out doing all this racing but i'm enjoying doing it i'm not going away thinking oh apart from this weekend maybe thinking <laughs> but uh not going away thinking it's hard weekends i'm just enjoying my racing and uh i think that's why we, why i find i do so well is that i just in, enjoy racing we had a good laugh in tassie when you joined us for the commentary <laughs> on the road you have been washing clothes in the hotel bathtubs, <laughs> haven't you? Are your washing skills on the improve, Will Brown? No, no, they're not. Like, a- anyone who knows me knows I'm hopeless. So I don't pack a toothbrush. I'll end up having to buy a new toothbrush when I go away. I forget undies, forgot pants this weekend, and I'm hopeless. So I, I make sure i got my race suit, my helmet, and all that before I go away, but I don't care about the rest. So uh, when I go away for long periods, it's always a bit of fun trying to get sorted. Last one. You enjoy a bit of flying, and that continues to grow that side of things for you. I, I find with you know Neil Crompton and others that are, that have indulged that passion, it is, it is a natural complement to racing in many ways. Do you find that, or is it more of an escape? And what's the latest in in flying land for you? Yeah, I guess uh, you know even though racing is my hobby, it's sort of become my job. So now I've got you know the flying as my hobby, and um, yeah, I've just loved it. I, I'm actually. Uh, what would you call it? Restoring a plane. It's a it's a kit built plane that has actually flown before. But uh, tell us about that. Yeah, it's come out from America. So uh, an old guy um, down in Benalla actually owned it, and I got onto it. So it's an ex Reno Air Race plane, and um, yeah, it's really fast. So right now I'm doing a bit of a YouTube series on building that up, and um, yeah, it's definitely hurting my back pocket a bit. But uh, it's a it's a cool plane, and I'm just yeah really really love the flying. Like you know when I'm away from racing, I can look at ordering stuff, and it's it's a different sort of discipline. I find it's made me um, a, a bit 
more disciplined in what I do. You know, you can't make mistakes in the plane and, and that sort of stuff. Otherwise, there can be serious consequences. So I've enjoyed that, and uh, I've actually had to learn to study, which I've, I've never done before in my life. I never, I never did much at school, so when I had to uh, try to study for my plane license, that was a bit of fun. But uh, yeah, I might not be the most switched on with uh, with bookwork. Good on you. Tough weekend for you here. I know that you're always smiling. Um, go get them in Tasmania, and for the rest of the year, mate. We hope at some point you get to do that. That little international ambition that you have and tick that off but I know Bathurst uh, for supercars and, and for the rest of the, the Gen 3 kind of season will be a big um, a big focus for you go get them and thanks for chatting with us cheers thanks for the chat a note for avid fans of the pod yes Will's teammate Brody Kostecki was a recent guest on the Rusty's Garage Motorsport Brief it's not an Erebus favouritism thing I just thought that Will's form in WA at the last round of supercars and the fact that we were working together at Phillip Island while he raced the TCR made for a timely chat and it was nice to do it face to face too. A couple of other bits of news for you. Massive congrats to Nash Morris whose driving went to another level on his return to Trans Am. The racing in that class as a colleague reflected was box office and on his 20th birthday Nash went to victory lane. It looks like he is a chip off the old block, just like his dad. Bathurst winner and super touring champion, Paul Morris. And the dude is chuffed too. Well done. Molly Taylor continues to show her truly world-class talent. A former Australian rally champion who was top of the world for Nico Rosberg's outfit in the inaugural Extreme E season for electric SUVs. She lost that ride, but has never really spoken about it. Such is her professionalism. Molly joins another team, Veloce Racing, for this year and leads the series by 11 points after winning the Scottish round at the weekend with teammate Kevin Hansen. I wonder if Nico is regretting not re-signing her. We need to catch up with Molly again, too, for a part two of her story. Fun fact, she was the first ever guest on Rusty's Garage. And finally, a shout out to Michael Clementi, who was racing Hyundai Excels only a few years back. He won the Aussie title in 2018, took a massive step with family to join TCR. After stints in a Civic Type R and an Audi, Michael, who's only in his early 20s, moved into the new Cupra at the weekend and joined a list of more than 20 drivers to now be a race winner in TCR Australia. The family went mad. Legendary British DJ Carl Cox is right behind Michael's racing. He will be thrilled with that result too. Great stuff all. We're out of time. Make sure you join us next week for a preview of the Indy 500 with a member of the NBC commentary team. Won't spoil it for you just yet. If you've got a question about the greatest spectacle in racing, the 107th running of the 500, hit me up on socials and I'll try and tackle it for you. That is it for today. We'll catch you next time. Bye for now.